JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 11th. I am Harold Lambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD. I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar outperformed all the other major currencies on Tuesday during the, the Asian session on Wednesday, with the main losers being NZD, CHF, the Euro and the British Pound in that order. The currencies against which the greenback act out the least gains were the Canadian dollar, the Aussie and the Japanese yen. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar combined with the relative strength of the Japanese yen and the weakening of the risk linked Kiwi points to a risk of trading activity. However, the slide in the Swiss franc and the relative strength of uh, the Aussie and the Luni point otherwise, thus, with the FX market painting a very blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that all but one of the major European indices under our radar have traded in the green with the only one failing to record any gains being um, Spain's IBEX 35. In the US, Nasdaq gained the most, the S&P uh, also finished positive, but the Dow lost some ground. Today in Asia, market participants decided to increase further uh, their, their uh, risk exposure with China's composite in Hong Kong's Hang Seng uh, gaining around 0.71% um, uh, respectively. Now, with no clear catalyst behind, invest, uh, behind the boost uh, in investors', um, in investors uh, morale, at least we couldn't find any fundamental reason for that, we believe that uh, Bargain handers return to buy beaten down stocks before the release of the US CPIs for April later in the day. In our view, the fundamental catalysts are still pointing to the downside. We have growth concerns uh, with regards to the global economy, especially China. We have uh, expectations of aggressive tightening by some major central banks. So the fundamentals are still pointing to the downside. and. We believe that it was just investor uh, bargain hunters buying at uh, very low levels for now. Now, today, as I said, we have the US CPIs for April. Both the headline and core CPIs are forecast to have slowed to 8.1 and 6% from 8.5 and 6.5% respectively. This uh, may, be, uh, may be interpreted by some investors as uh, an early peak sign. At its uh, latest meeting, the FOMC decided to lift interest rates by 50 basis points, as was widely anticipated, but Fed Chair Jerome Powell downplayed the chances for a 75 basis points hike in June, saying that 50 basis points uh, should be on the table for the next uh, couple of meetings. This resulted in a slide in the US dollar uh, after the, just after the gathering, but uh, uh, that was a one-day story. With a bring back, with a, excuse me, with a green back making a comeback, as market participants reevaluated the situation and brought back to the table their triple hike bets. However, latest remarks by Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic that they are unlikely to use anything bigger than 50 basis points hikes prompted participants to remove again their triple hike bets. According to the CME Fed Watch tool. There is only a 10% chance now for a 75 basis points hike, while the rest 90% is assigned to another 50 basis points. So, a potential slowdown in the CPIs could add credence to the view that only 50 basis points increments will be delivered in the months to come, 
and may result in a setback in the US dollar. However, we stick to our guns that even with that, the Fed remains among, if not the most hawkish uh, major central bank, and thus we would expect the US dollar to rebound soon and continue its latest uptrend, especially against currencies, the central banks of which are expected to follow a much slower and smoother tightening path. In other words, if the CPI is indeed uh, slow to near their expected levels, the US dollar could uh, experience a retreat, but we will treat that retreat as a corrective move, and we believe that it could still there are still decent chances for a uh, dollar rebound in the days to come. Now, in case the CPI numbers come higher than expected, the greenback is likely to shoot instantly higher as higher numbers could revive speculation that a triple hike may be needed at one of the upcoming gatherings. Now, tonight, during the Asian session Thursday, the attention is likely to be transferred to the summary of opinions from the latest Bank of Japan gathering. At that gathering, the Bank of Japan kept all its policy settings untouched, noting that it will offer to buy unlimited amounts of 10-year government bonds to defend an implicit 0.25% cap around its zero target every market day. So this put at rest rumors that the bank may need to tweak its yield curve control policy soon due to the continued tests near uh, that 0.25% cap and also the weakness of the yen. And also reaffirmed the strong willingness of policymakers to stay ultra loose at a time when other major central banks have flagged aggressive tightening. So a strong reminder of that in the in the summary of opinions could result in a, another round of uh, selling in the Japanese yen. However, with concerns over global growth intensifying lately, we believe that the safer pair to exploit any further yen weakness may be dollar yen. Let's not forget that the Japanese yen is also a, a safe haven with investors uh, where investors uh, sh seek shelter during times of turbulent uncertainty. So uh, growth concerns could result in some yen buying against some currencies, but due to the Bank of Japan stay, staying ultra loose at a time when the Fed is expected to continue uh, raising by at least 50 basis points uh, per meeting in the next uh, months, we believe that dollar yen uh, has the potential uh, to, to trade higher. Now, during the early European session tomorrow, the spotlight is likely to turn to the first estimate of the UK GDP for the first quarter. I'm mentioning this release because it will be out ahead of uh, before I publish uh, my daily report tomorrow. So alongside that figure, we get the business investment numbers for the quarter, the industrial and manufacturing produ production rates for March, and the trade balance for the same month. Economic activity is forecast to have slowed to 1% quarter over quarter in the UK from 1.3%, but this would take the year over year rate up to 9% from 6.6%. There is no forecast for the business investment, and while the industrial production is forecast to have rebounded fractionally, the manufacturing production is expected to have slid again at a somewhat faster pace than, than in February. Now, remember that last week the Bank of England hiked by 25 basis points, as was widely anticipated. Excuse me, but it warned uh, over recession risks, projecting a contraction for next year. So with that in mind, a uh, 1% growth rate and a higher year-over-year -year one could ease some wood concerns over a recession in the UK and result in a relief bounce in the pound. However, bearing in mind that we are already well into the second quarter and that the bank's projections with regards to a recession we are for next year, which makes them still valid, we believe that uh, market participants will remain cautious with regards to the Bank of England's future course of action. So due to high inflation, the bank is likely to continue lifting interest rates, but the recession concerns could slow down the process, which could keep the British pound uh, in a downtrend mode, even if we experience a, a relief bounce. So we remain a negative with regards to the pound, especially against uh, the US dollar, which we expect to stay very strong. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. 
For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.